Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today we're talking something that everybody has asked me a million times, and it is, what is a monsoon garden? Now guys, before we really start getting started with what a monsoon garden is, I want to first tell everybody that I did something that I'm going to show you guys at the end of the video, so you're going to have to watch it all the way through to see what I did, but it's something that everybody has suggested to me and I haven't done a lot of before. So. Just note that. Second, I want to remind everybody to make sure that you subscribe to our channel and then also go over to Mighty Crop and follow them because we are doing our 10K giveaway and every day we get a little bit closer, which I'm so excited about. So thank you guys so much for sharing and letting people know about our channel because we are growing and that means a lot, especially because we want to get land. <laughs> so thank you guys very, very much for doing that. So, what is a monsoon garden? And for all of you guys that are planting a monsoon garden and already know what it is, why am I talking about it so early? Now, in Arizona, it has the rainy season, most of the time. <laughs> I say that because last year we actually had a drought and it was like 45 days straight of like 118 degrees and it was miserable. <laughs> But typically we have what's called a monsoon and basically that is just the season of the rains. It happens basically when we're so dry and hot and it's completely like hundred and something outside and then like everybody else's weather is kind of normal and then some something happens with the cooling and our heat. I'm not a meteorologist and we get rain, ta-da, <laughs> something, something coming up off of the water. But it's basically, it happens in about July, which is when our weather starts getting a little bit humid and we get this fun-filled thing called haboobs. For those of you guys that have been following me for a while, you know that I post pictures and videos on my Instagram and also a couple videos on YouTube of a haboob. It's basically like this big giant wall of dust that just slowly creeps and covers the entire state. And then rain comes. Sometimes they come at the same time and then it's just like raining mud. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> but <laughs> on a brighter note, this is a perfect time to get a fifth growing season. Yes, that's right. For those of you guys that haven't already figured it out by watching my channel, we get to grow stuff all year long. There pretty much is maybe like one month out of the year that's a little insane that things don't typically like to grow, but if you plant everything correctly, you can still get a bit of a harvest even when it's like 118 degrees. So that pretty much is happens in that monsoon season. For those really, really hot temperatures, if you plant your monsoon season garden correctly, then in those super hot temperatures, you'll be able to harvest some of your monsoon plants. So I know that probably sounds a little crazy and a lot of you guys are probably like, what the heck, Tiffany? <laughs> did you just say it rains mud and it's a wall of dust? And yes, I did. And yes, I still love my super hot, beautiful state because Arizona is a great place to live and it allows us to be able to grow a lot of different things. A lot of people have all heard of Three Sisters Garden which is the corn, the beans, and the squash. Basically, you plant corn, it grows straight up. The beans can grow around the corn and use the corn as a trellis. And then the squash covers the bottom of the corn and basically covers the soil in order for it to stay cool. Well, that, everyone, was derived here in Arizona by the Native Americans. That's how they grew food during the monsoon season. They realized that if they grew those three, three things together, it could grow all together and they would get a harvest of beans, corns, and squash, which is amazing. You can also do amaranth in there too as well. So that's another little thing you can throw in there, which also gives you a green. So with that said, why am I now talking about it so early since I said earlier that this is something that we do in July. 
And that is because our weather was really different last year. Last year it was really crazy where we had a giant drought and it was super hot though we got tomatoes <laughs> in the winter which was very nice but it was really really hot <laughs> and now I've noticed after living in Arizona for so long I can kind of tell a little bit of weather patterns but I noticed that we are getting really really windy where it's just kind of like already that pre haboob season which is kind of crazy because it's only May and we're getting really hot a lot earlier so typically not saying it's 100%, but that means that monsoon season might come a little bit earlier. And also, last year we had a shortage of a lot of different things. And so I wanna make sure that before those shortages like really set in and happen, I have those things that I need in order to plant my monsoon garden. Those things being compost, worm castings, and seeds. So although I have my little worm bin that does give me a lot of compost and worm castings, it does not give me enough for my entire garden. So one of the things that I always make sure that I do is get my supplies that I need from the AZ Worm Farm. For those of you guys that have watched my channel for a while, or if you go there on Saturdays, a lot of times you'll see me because they have a little farmer's market and I'm always getting stuff to kind of replenish my garden. So. I wanna make sure that I have those things stocked up because for those of you guys that started your gardens last year, you know that those things ran out of the AZ Worm Farm. The AZ Worm Farm is a small business, so it was trying to handle a lot of people coming in and gardening at the same time, and therefore within like a month, they ran out of everything. And having my monsoon garden planted is really important for my family since we eat fresh out of the garden and we're saving for land. So by us being able to not have to get certain vegetables out of the grocery store and being able to eat a lot of things fresh out of our garden, we pretty much eat out of our garden every single day. I do buy a couple of things from the farmer's market, but the majority of the stuff I eat, we eat out of our garden. So being able to do that is important. So I wanna make sure that I have all of that stuff early before it gets sold out because if I don't get it planted in time and if I don't get my beds amended in time, then it's not gonna be a good season later on when I'm trying to depend on harvests. The other thing is seeds. Now seeds was something last year that I mean, I don't even think it was just last year because I think it's this year too as well that there are a lot of major seed companies that have specialty seeds or rare seeds, which rare seeds are stuff that I need because I live in a place where it gets to be 120. So I can't just go to typical places and find rare seeds that are meant for really hot places. And there's still limitations on what type of seeds you can get, how many seeds you can get, and all those different things. And some some things like Baker Creek, um, even Native Seeds, which is an Arizona seed company, had limitations and had a moment where they were like, can't order seeds right now because we're trying to catch up on orders or trying to make sure we have everything. So I wanna make sure I get my seeds early. Now, to help myself with what seeds I need to get, I use two different growing guides. I use the uh, um, Urban Farmer, which is by Greg Peterson. It's, he does the um, Great American Seed Up, which is a, normally it's like a expo that we have here in Arizona where everybody can go get seeds. Um, so I use his growing guide and his is a lot easier because it's separated by the first and the 15th. So in Arizona, pretty much every single month in Arizona, you can plant something either the 1st or the 15th. Some months there's a lot of different things and then some months there's not. So for this month, I'm gonna show you guys what we can plant starting the 15th, even though it's a little bit late. I'm gonna put out a little list of what you can plant now. That's what you can plant for this month. Um, this isn't monsoon season planting time. That's gonna be in July. This is just kind of like 
summer season planting time. Um, everything that I didn't get in the first part of my summer garden or things that I need to replant, this is kind of like your second chance of getting it in and getting it going before you start looking at the super, super hot weather. So what I'm planting are some sunflowers. I'm gonna try like a mammoth sunflower in a pot because I don't really want the roots to take over one of my beds. So I'm gonna try it just in a pot. And then my acorn squash, I'm going to try that again because it did not get the proper something to it. So it looks like it's gonna be half dead. Half of my okra bed did good, half of it got destroyed by the rats. So I'm gonna replant some of those. Basil, basil, basil. So I have Italian basil, Thai basil, I have lettuce leaf basil, and I have Genovese basil that I'm planting. And then I'm gonna get a couple more garlic chives just in the pots because now that I have so much room, I want to make sure I have enough garlic chives to where we can always have some fresh. I do make chive butter too as well. And then I'm planting my Malabar spinach and I'm gonna plant my Malabar spinach that I grew myself, so I'm pretty excited about that because I'm like doing all the whole testing of germination and all that before I put them on my Etsy's. And then I'm really gonna try and get this loofah going because loofah does really well in Arizona and I think it'll make cute Christmas gifts to be able to add that into like little baskets and stuff like that. Although we celebrate Hanukkah, we do have family members that celebrate Christmas so I do give them little gifts too as well. And we have door prizes when we have like family over for Hanukkah and Thanksgiving. So that'll be fun. Now, for those of you guys that are planning, wanna plan your monsoon garden early, these are the list of things that you can plant for your monsoon garden. So I hope that helps you guys get like an idea of what you can start doing now and then also what you want to start planning for because planning early is going to be key I feel like for at least the next couple of growing seasons. Now I want to show you guys, I'm going to take you guys outside and show you guys what I did because I'm pretty excited about it. Alright guys, so this is the surprise. I am introducing a lot of flowers into my garden. These are all the new ones and then I also got like some extra basil in there too as well because I want to uh, try and help my pollination issue so I have been <laughs> told to plant more flowers and when it comes to like growing food I've always been like a really big stickler about it of like okay I need to make sure I'm trying to grow as much food as possible but then it meant that I'm not getting enough bees so I've had to do a lot of hand pollination and my first cucumber plant, there were a lot of cucumbers that came on there but didn't get pollinated. So that was pretty frustrating because I only got I think like two cucumbers so far and then I have a couple that may or may not be pollinated. So I wanna make sure that I am getting good pollination so I planted a bunch of flowers <laughs> and I put flowers everywhere and since I since I have the open spaces for the pots, because my garden is actually producing a lot of food for two people. We have tomatoes galore, we have greens, we have Swiss chard, we have all those things preserved in the freezer. So we can pull them out, make meals, and, oh, as well as a ton of green powder too as well that I get to add to um, make like more nutrients for the mills that we have. So we're actually able to eat a lot of stuff coming out of the garden and that's not even including what's fresh, it's also including what's preserved. Since in Arizona we get to grow a lot longer of a growing season, it's not as crazy, crazy of a big deal to have so, so much preserved because you can always have it fresh in the garden. There are things that you won't be able to have, like you can only grow okra at a certain time of the year or beans at a certain time of the year or cucumbers or cauliflower, but there's always something you can grow. So if you're eating in season, then that's something that can really help. Now on the next week, I'm going to do a video too about how I'm kind of planning for the things that I don't grow. So stuff that either I do grow and I don't grow enough of, or I haven't grown like myself. So things like potatoes or I didn't grow enough green beans or different things like that. So 
I'm gonna be taking you guys to different farmers markets that I find and different places like that. I might actually go up to one of the big farms here in Arizona to do a little bit of grocery shopping there so that I can get stuff in season, so at the peak of its ripeness, and then I can preserve that. Because my goal is, come the fall, I don't wanna have to go to the grocery store for at least the entire fall and winter. So I wanna have enough stuff preserved and enough stuff going in my garden. Partly because we are really, really trying to save up for land so that we can get that going. And the other part is, you know, don't know if there's going to be another pandemic or anything weird like that so <laughs> I just want to be out of the grocery stores during flu and cold, cold season so I'm getting a lot of things just put in our house um, and I'm preserving a lot of things that I know that I'm short on so I will be going over that further in this week in some videos so I hope that this gave you guys an idea of what monsoon gardening is all about. I hope it was informative and I didn't ramble too much, but until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.